Hello, I'm Isuri from National Chapter Sri Lanka. Uh, this is a joint venture between Samuttana and Mel Medra. Uh, Samuttana was established in 2007 as a not for profit organization and affiliated to King's College UK. Uh, just to tell you what we've been doing this year, uh, we have completed the UTC Level 1 course. Uh, eight modules for eight to ten people. The next will be in October. We'll be training more people, nurses and other people in this area. Uh, Interdicing Recovery College was one of our initiatives, which means we use people who have already recovered as peer trainers. We also have trained in people from NDDCP, NGO, and we work very closely with the Ministry of Justice Community Correction Officers. We have been training the officers and also we have been doing supervision, Dr. Shamalwani Gartner. Every Friday he does supervision at Mel Madurai, who is the other partner of, uh, of this national chapter. So this is some of the training one for the corrections officer throughout Sri Lanka. They were asked to come to head office and we did one day full program. We also conduct training uh, with um, corrections officers, the victims and also the police officers one full day. We have our staff had access to the victims as well. It's a confidential report. I could also share it on her if she would require that, but it's a confidential report. And we have also trained people from National Dental Drug Control Board and also NGOs and also National Institute of Mental Health as the only government body which has a separate place for substance use people treatment and all. There are all the nurses, one full day training is done. So we also had TOT trainers. Sometimes has a batch of trainers who could go out and train so many people, not only in Colombo, all over. We also have every month uh, a workshop which will enhance the substance use and mental health. And the last one was on mindfulness. Mindfulness is a very important part for mental health. Then, uh, as I mentioned to you, University of East Anglia, we're going to uh, have interns coming from next year. She went to Jaffna last, last week and trained all these uh, counsellors and nurses from the hospital in Jaffna. She would do, uh, then she's also going to do another workshop, full day workshop on September on compassion focused therapy, which is very important for uh, people who are working with substance use. Thank you very much. And also, what we intend to do in the future, if you ask me, that we're going to work with youth uh, and um, we're going to invite them to our membership. We're going to widen the membership and focus more on youth and the young professionals from Rotary. We're trying to get from Rotary and we're going to increase the number of members. We're also going to train especially nurses and teachers because teachers and nurses are important components. So these are some of the activities we intend to do. Just before I finish off, just a small story. There was a call from a man, a gentleman at nine o'clock in the night one day and said that my friend is, I have a friend who's behaving very strangely. I think he's taking some substance. Can you please speak to him uh, tomorrow morning? I said, yes, please share my number. But this particular guy kept on calling me at 10.30 in the night. I didn't know it was him. I didn't pick the phone. But Ultimately, I had to answer the call because he kept on asking. They're calling me to see that the moment I answered, he started crying and said he has problems with his wife, with his girlfriend, with his mother, with his work, and he wants to commit suicide. I'm like 10 30 in the night. What do I do with this person? I had to speak to him for one full hour and said, Look here, committing suicide is not the only option. Please hold on. And I spoke to his mother, who was also a nurse, and said, this man has suicidal thoughts. He's only 24 year old, final year software engineer. I said, hold on to him. I have a friend psychologist who will help him. And I told him, please don't call me all the time. We'll get your help. This guy did not stop calling me till 12 o'clock. I think I used my phone was ringing. I put it on silent. I couldn't sleep because I was wondering whether the police will come because. I was thinking he will do something and my number would have appeared a hundred times in his phone. But I, he survived till next morning. He went to my, my psychologist friend and apparently he has been hitting his mother daily. That's what uh, one of the reasons. 
He recovered from it to, within two weeks, within one month. He recovered fully and uh, he did his viva presentation. He stopped eating his mother. And I was so happy that I had this person. But nonetheless, I don't answer any calls after nine o'clock. Thank you very much.